up started in 2006 to stimulate the bidding filmmakers to tell their Asian diaspora stories. And since then, uh, 15 films are produced by Cinemania and all premiered here during the festival. These are the last three, and the new this year was a script workshop under the guidance of Ernie Tay, the script coach. And after that, uh, there were six candidates who got the workshop, and then they had to pitch their stories, and three were selected, and were, uh, had to produce the film within five weeks. And this was the result. So, um, of course, uh, we want to hear something from you. How was it? Maybe start with ladies. Um, Amber, can you tell something? Maybe don't get red. Um, <laughs> do you have a certain nickname? Have you? Uh, the Lady Bug, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Lily White. Lily White. That's what my grandmother calls me because. Um, because she is a bit brown and I'm not, and that was like traumatizing for me because I didn't feel really uh, Indonesian. And then she said, No, you're not white, you're really white. <laughs> Hallo oma, met Amber. Hallo Amber. Hoe u gaat? Nog altijd rond Amber. <laughs> ik wil het nog graag hebben over de film die we gaan maken. Want ik ben nu 26 jaar. Ja. En ik moet verschillende keuzes maken. Uh. En voor mij is het nu heel belangrijk om, om te ontdekken waar ik vandaan kom. Ja. Mijn roots. Ja. En het leek me leuk om dan samen Indische pastijtjes te maken. Ja, dat is goed. Maar dan zie ik u snel. Ja, het is goed, Amber. En Grandma gave us a lot of wisdom. Yes. What is the most important lesson she learned? Ja, mm -hmm. um, yeah. maybe the last um, was a conversation we had in the film. That um, if, you, if you're making choices, just pick something. And if it doesn't turn out the right way, then go back. Okay, what brought you to make this film? Um, yeah, I really want to make uh, a Moroccan film or a film about Moroccan people in Holland. Uh, there were made, there are some films made, but they're already uh, or they always focus on the hijacking exactly, and it's a very uh, how do you call it here type of film, portrayal of Moroccan people, and I want to make a more diverse uh, image of a family. So uh, that was my motivation, and I really want to tell the story because I know from uh, my, my own family, also family of friends, my local friends, only have uh, the same experiences in Holland, the, the acceptance and the struggles. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Totally. And how, how how did you get on inspiration? Um, well, uh, some of the inspiration is actually from my uh, my dad. My dad's actually uh, Moroccan Indonesian. My mother is Dutch, and uh, my father came here uh, with with uh, his parents uh, emigrated in Holland very early, even before the 50s, and uh, their family really uh, emigrated a lot in Holland. So uh, back when the in the 70s, when the hijackings happened, there was a lot of uh, anger between the Moroccan people and Dutch people and my father was uh, already very immigrated and he was a kid on both sides. He actually was in the military and commandos uh, back then. So a lot of Moroccan people thought of him as a traitor and a lot of Dutch, Dutch people who didn't know him, they, they were scared by him. They were scared by him, uh, of all Moroccan people back then. So it's a very hard time to live there as a, as a Moroccan man. So uh, yeah, it's also a part of inspiration. Okay. Geen samba, is te pittig voor je. Nee, maar ik vind wel dat het overheerst. Overheerst. Dat klinkt als een smoes, man. Ja, dan is het maar een smoes. Ik kan ook al maar vragen of ze een paar blokjes kaas voor je snijdt. Nee, ik ben niet zo'n kaasliefhebber, hoor. Nee? Dat zou ik niet zeggen. En wat wil je daar nou mee zeggen? Luister, je hebt een blander vrouwtje, blander werk. Ik neem aan dat je ook dagelijks blande voedsel eet. Ja, misschien wel. Dus ik kan me voorstellen dat je na al die tijd liever een broodje kaas wil dan uh, zat de babby van mama. Ja, yeah. problem actually. En 
and it's like uh, 30 years ago from, from hijacking of course, but it still it still lives somewhere. And also in the new generations, who also like a of friends of mine are also uh, very Dutch in their uh, culture of course. But also those guys also know about the history and also still have like this thing about, yeah, we were promised something that didn't happen, so it's, yeah, it's still uh, alive. Still so, alive. Yeah. And Alex, um, where did you got your inspiration for your movie? I uh, like tea <laughs> <laughs> and Chinese and traditions. And uh, what I see in the Netherlands is traditions are uh, not as understood uh, by the younger people and by the Western people. So I wanted to make a movie not just about tea, but about traditions more, about symbols and family. Yeah, just just some hints, and not not really a big statement. Or anything, just, uh, yeah, because you made it in a very comedic way, com comedy way. But yeah, because it's a, it's a short story, so to, to convey a, a story, I think a comedy is more, uh, in my in my opinion, a nice nice uh, uh, yeah, platform to, to, to bring a a, a symbol, huh? just a, a meaning. It's not, not just a comedy, it's not slapstick, but yeah, I want, I want to bring a, a, a meaning, a, 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 a message, yeah? so I think comedy is a, a, a good uh, vehicle for that. And what, what message do you want to give exactly to, to your audience? Yeah, there's some nice uh, traditions uh, you should pay attention to, so if you don't, then you will get, it will get lost, and the later generations, they won't know anything. Which can do Wikipedia work, but they don't do it themselves. So, uh, and, and did you also got the inspiration from close by, or was it just? Yeah, sure. My sister uh, uh, has similar, uh, a similar is a story. Her uh, her wedding was also not very Asian. But then, in the end, she had to do also more Asian uh, things, which she originally didn't want to. do. Hey Sandy, how are you starting to get out of here? Mom, I don't want to get out of here. Sandy, how are you going to get out of here? Sandy, have you heard of it? Don't get out of here. Because we don't have to get out of here. We don't have to get out of here. But there's no time for it. And Charles says that it doesn't need to be. What are you going to get out of here? Hey, don't get out of here. If you don't get out of here, it will affect our king's name. My first time, if you're not happy, you won't win, do you know? Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Okay. Okay, it's good, DJ. We're going to drink a little bit. Yes. I mean, can you tell something more about your background and what you want to do in the future? Um, well, uh, I actually did um, four years as uh, camera editing before. Yeah. And now I'm in uh, Brussels at uh, St. Lucas, which is an art film school, and I'm doing directing and writing right now there. So, uh, and I'm really planning to uh, make a lot of movies, hopefully in Holland, also outside of Holland. I really want to go uh, noble. <laughs> and you're already busy with the next one, right? Yeah, I've already finished it. So I'm, I'm writing, for, I'm, right now I'm writing for my uh, end film for a year. So, uh, so I'm doing right now. So. <laughs> oh, great. So, I'm a student. In, uh, at the University of Utrecht, the Master of Film and Television Studies. Uh, so that's my project now. I have to write my thesis. And I also work at film festivals, Cinegit. It's across the street. And Pro Short Film Festival in Nijmegen. And after I finish my thesis, I will work there, but not full time. So I would like to make. Um, feature documentary. About the same? Well, maybe. Main so I'm planning this crowdfunding thing to go to Indonesia, to Samara, where she lived. So maybe I can make a film out of it. Alex? Uh, I don't have any film background, but um, I'm more uh, a China specialist. But now I discovered this, uh, this new tool, so yeah, I think I want to <laughs> Discover it more and make um, more movies, maybe. Uh, but we'll be all on the same theme about uh, uh, telling a story about China or traditions or anything. 헤어질 때는 말이 필요하지 않았어요. 앞으로 내 눈에 띄지 마라. 죽여버린 수가 있다. 
너야말로 뛰지 마. 대박이다! 난 자유인이야! 어지럽게. <웃음> 왜 슬퍼야 돼요? 저 기분 되게 좋은데? 그냥 장 대리님. 왜 저번에 저한테 빌려가신 노트북 있지 않습니까? 돌려주셔야죠. 돌려드릴게요. 아니요, 좀 급해서. 3만 원이요. 착불이에요. 어, 이거 어떡해. 아, 이거 진짜 죽여버릴 수도 없고. 영화 나와봐. 착불이래, 5만 원. 진짜 민폐예요, 민폐. 존재 자체가. 둘이 잤어요? 둘이 잤냐고, 안 잤냐고. 너 아직도 나 좋아하냐? 야, 착각하지 마. 다른 사람들도 다 이렇게 헤어지나요? 이번엔 우리 둘다 진짜 잘해보기로 한 거니까 잘될 거예요. 
and he found out that, let's say there was a there was some kind of a pop idol called yeah. Mannequin, and they, he found that it was uh, her like that. But she wanted to put some uh, the wit and twist in uh, that film. Uh, uh. Actually, this film was released in Korea last year, March. So actually, she has been she has seen this film also. She hasn't seen this film for a long time now. She's also preparing her own film. So she feels very special. So she hasn't seen it for a long time, and especially in Amsterdam. So she is uh, she finds this very how can I say very touched and very she enjoying that film. It's, uh, also. The girl from Thailand and to be in the front of 10,000 people. Actually, I also really work hard to prove myself that I am, I am one of them. It's not about my look. I am Asian or a girl. Don't care my look and don't care where I come from. I play great music and I can rock party. Offer themselves to play for free, yeah. so they just 
and not bring any wave of music. Yeah. Did you also do gigs in other Asian countries or just Europe? Um, I actually from I my first gig in Germany, and then I come to Thailand, live there. So that got some way really bring me international. The first I go to South Korea, and I become Nepal, India, and then slowly more and more around Asia. Which and one, then which club did you play in Korea? In Korea, oh many new Garden opening and. It's all a few years ago, Garden, no? Gat, Ilui. Let's say the later one, Ilui. Ilui one. I like Korean, no? South Korea. You have many good clubs there, good South Korea. <laughs> but you have many clubs that are open for a while and then open the next and open the next. Many new clubs open up. When she was still learning in her first yeah. month of DJing and just practicing at home, we went to see Dimitri from Paris somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was watching over his shoulder. She went <laughs> home and she played an amazing set. <laughs> What's going I on? Didn't want to go play, like, I didn't go into the same. I go home immediately Dimitri, the same. She played the same. <laughs> you were talking in the movie that you want to go to the top. What is the top? The top for me, I would like to go all the techno club, like all the techno festival or uh, ten. Uh, Tomorrowland and Hamburg. That's, That's it. Top. That's it. Yeah. Oh, and, and it's new for me now in Ibiza. Ibiza? Yeah. Yeah. In Ibiza? In Ushuaia. And I play. I will play this summer. Yeah.